Nikolit represents more than just a truck. We represent a new way of thinking, a new way of transporting goods, a new way of fueling trucks. The optics of the vehicle, the looks of the vehicle, has to represent that new technology uh, that we are all about. It's, it's a different culture, you know, we, we are a startup. I like uh, being more efficient in a way. Everything we do is moving forward. And in a big OEM, sometimes you work on something and it goes not really, you know, the way it's supposed to go. So that's kind of a, a big advantage. Being unified across that system provides a, a, a better experience throughout and allows us to affect change that can be felt throughout the entire ecosystem in a positive way and, and begin to build those products that are you know, useful at the end of the day. So we got new samples in. I wanted to get your input on them. We're looking at our launch colors for our Trey FCEV. So we started off thinking something, um, you know, kind of sky blue, icy blue. I think this is a little too playful, though. Mm -hmm. So we started to think going into the whites, the, you know, the three C's just for marketing and for launch. Mm -hmm. um, you know, looking at this kind of, you know, a little bit more gray, feels a little bit more serious, a little bit more modern for what our truck is. Yeah, no, I think it transitions nicely. And I think it represents the, uh, the hydrogen aspect of the vehicle. So I, right. it, to me, it makes sense. Electric, hydrogen. The thing really is when you design normal cars, you, you work on cars for everybody. But this, these things, you know, the trucks as such, you actually design for professional drivers. <laughs> and that's a big difference. You want to have kind of an, a welcoming atmosphere. You know, good materials, fit and finish perfect, all the ergonomics right, you know, starts with the steering wheel, goes into the display area. So these kind of things make a difference. The feel, the, the sound, and all these kind of things are very important to us. Sweet. I like how it fades, like I like how the top part kind of like fades off a little bit. Yep. Right, and it starts at the bottom and, and it pulses while the charge, and it starts. At the end of the day, what feeds my soul is that I'm solving problems and uh, I'm, I, I'm creating something that's never been done before. I don't think there's too many people in the world that can say they go to work and they're inventing something new every day. Yeah. Like it should be different, but it should be uh, an evolution. So what we're doing here is we're making sure that our audio package is adjusted to the right level. And what that means is we have uh, sounds that are dependent on speed. Our vehicle is very quiet. And what that does is it allows us to have a, a blank slate for sound. What percentage is that? 65. Um, uh, so what we've done is we've created a beautiful hierarchy between these families of sound. When you have this blank slate, you can really reduce cognitive load. So we want to make sure that our drivers react accordingly to what the situation is and, and make sure they do so quickly. When you're building software for a truck um, that's, that's used as a tool, you really have to concentrate on making it simple. Their job as a driver is to focus on the road, the load behind them, and the people in front of them. And really, you want software to be almost be invisible uh, during the driving experience. Really, we had to start from the ground up and say, let's create something simple, um, let's create something reliable, and make sure it's a tool for these people, because ultimately, that's what it is. Let's say I'm a driver, and I come out to the yard, and there are 100 Nikola trucks, and I need to find the one that's been assigned to me. I can open up the app, press this beacon button, and this feature essentially tells me which one I'm looking for and which one I'm assigned to. Also, let's say I took a break. I'm in the middle of uh, Phoenix when it's 110 degrees out. I can open up the roof hatch, and I can also uh, set the, the desired temperature that I want in the cabin. I can lock, unlock the truck as well. And a really cool one, every driver before starting a mission, they need to do a safety pre-check. And part of that is making sure that all of the, the lights on the truck, the safety lights, are working and functioning. 
And so you don't have to be partnered up with another driver to say, hey, put it in reverse, I need to hear it. You can do it all on your own with the app. Fleets are really trying to, to, to get every penny out of every mile they can. And so really the, the small things matter. And a lot of those small things you can kind of derive out of the data that we produce. So this is the web application that we've developed to uh, manage access to the truck. We're not reliant on proprietary systems and software on the truck to be able to diagnose the truck. Everything diagnostics wise we have built completely in house. From here, a fleet administrator can change uh, settings on, on the truck remotely for any truck, any driver, or the entire fleet. Our engineers have access to it, our service technicians and service team have access to it, and so will the fleets. So speed is really the value there. HMI stands for Human Machine Interface, and for us it's really the way that humans interact with the technology in our vehicle or in our ecosystem. What's really advantageous about the screens is for us to be able to uh, consolidate some of those screens that drivers are using, whether they're using Google Maps to, to navigate or um, a third-party application to track their, their hours. You know, we have control over the interfaces and what they look like, so we can present that in a, a much more clearer and concise way. And you can remove uh, peripherals from the drivers and, and ultimately uh, reduce the cognitive load, the things that they have to look at. On the instrument cluster, you are only going to see mission critical information. You know, uh, the, uh, the health and state of the truck, the regulatory pieces like how fast you're going, the speedometer, the odometer. I think generally, uh, when we put drivers in the tray, they are shocked at how big the screen is. Um, and they're excited about what can be on it, especially when we show them things like navigation and uh, some of the vehicle controls right on the homepage that, that are re readily accessible to them. If I want to start a route, and let's say I want to go to State Farm Stadium, where the Cardinals play, it's going to give me uh, an optimal route. So if we zoom in a little bit, this route is going to take us through a tunnel right here on the I-10. But let's say the driver is pulling uh, a, a load with hazardous material in it. The driver could go in here, configure the load, choose uh, the classification for the hazardous material. Uh, they can also change the trailer height, the width, the weight, uh, depending on what they're pulling. I'll confirm. And it will adjust the route based on um, where the vehicle can go. So if you saw, it went from going through the tunnel to around it. And when you zoom in, you'll also be able to see on this map uh, bridge heights, um, where hazardous material is not allowed, where it was originally going. And then as we start to move, the driver will also see turn-by-turn -turn, uh, directions on the instrument cluster. about what you do uh, to, to be in the design world yeah, because um, this is not a job, it's a way of life. I really see the transportation industry and specifically heavy duty transport as an opportunity to have the most impact. Really we have an awesome opportunity to influence this backbone that is the American economy. And if we can do that in a positive way while reducing emissions, I think that's just a great challenge. It is truly from the ground up. We're not only creating a truck, but we're creating an entire ecosystem. And that is what makes this exciting.